In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion those days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold, on, hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth worship and pay praise to you and say to your name, come to your worship of God with tremendous deeds among the children of heaven. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sins once, the righteousness for the sake of the unrighteous, 
Taking that grieving to God, put to death in flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So our Lord here is inviting us to love him, and he says, if you really, really love me, if you truly love me, then you will keep my commandments and this keeping of our Lord's commandments isn't just, you know, the, the ethical do this, don't do that. Sometimes that's what we can uh, kind of limit Christianity to. But here our Lord, when he's talking about the commandments, he's talking about believing in Jesus Christ and everything that Jesus has revealed to us about God, his Father. Our Lord says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And this keeping of our Lord's commandments, it's a consequence of our love for God. Right? Husband and wife. The husband gets home from work, and the husband could say, you know, if you really love me, you will have a rum and coke for me prepared every evening when I get home from work. And so Christ himself does not leave us abandoned in this struggle to live the Christian life. Right? We all know living the Christian life is, is hard. It's difficult. Our, our Lord, he says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Right? And we all know <laughs> we're not perfect. We all know that we, we struggle in life. Right? We all experience the consequences of sin in our life. We experience suffering. We experience difficulties in our life. We know that it is hard. And our Lord has not abandoned us. He's, in our gospel today, he says he sends us another. He sends us the advocate. He sends us the advocate to journey with us. He sends us the advocate to walk with us in our life. And the Greek word for advocate is parakletos. Parakletos. And parakletos Uh, has a lot of meaning. So I'm going to read off a bunch of of meanings that this word has. And hopefully by by reading off 
the, these meanings of the word parakletos, in our own heart, it will help us to, to understand who this advocate is, who this person is that Christ is sending us to help us along our path. It means to walk beside. It means to stand in for. It means comforter, helper, counselor, help when under accusation. When at a loss for what to say or to do, it is a person who is there to guide us and to help us. In the need of defense, to plead the cause for somebody, to be a witness for somebody, to offer courage in the moments of disheartening or discouraging moments. This is what the paraklitos is. This is what the advocate is meant to do. And, and this is the person that Christ is sending us. Christ is sending us his spirit to journey with us through life. Because on our own, by ourselves, we cannot be holy. By ourselves, we cannot get to heaven. And, and actually, that's how Christ wants it. Christ doesn't want us journeying on our own. And that's why he offers us himself the Eucharist, the confession. That's why he offers us the sacraments, the, the, the ordinary way in which Christ works in our life. And so Christ himself offers us his spirit to journey with us. There was a philosopher, and his name was Philo of Alexandria. He was a Jewish philosopher and somewhat of a contemporary of, of Jesus Christ himself. He uh, was a Jew, but he lived in, in Egypt in the city of Alexandria. He was born a little bit before Christ, and he died a little bit after Christ. And he has a writing in which he tells of the governor of Alexandria, whose name was Aulus Avilius Flaccus. And Flaccus, I'll just call him by his last name, and Flaccus had run into trouble with the governor, oh, sorry, with the, the emperor, Caligula. And um, if anybody knows their history, you know it's... it's uh, it's not hard to run into trouble with Caligula. He was a very flaky guy. You never knew exactly what he wanted. And so this, this emperor, Emperor Caligula, had exiled Flaccus to the island of Gyros, which was a, a Greek island in the Aegean Sea. And, uh, and Google it. Right? Uh, Gyros is this, is this island. Literally, it's, it's a rock that just kind of comes out of the sea. There, there's nothing on there. Uh, there I mean, it doesn't look like there's any animals that even live there. There's no greenery. It's just this rock. It's just this barren land in the middle of, of the Aegean Sea. And so uh, Flaccus was exiled to this island. And Flaccus left powerless. He couldn't say anything. He couldn't do anything. He's just left on this island. But he turns to a friend of his, Lepidus. And Lepidus becomes his paracletos. Lepidus was... Um, a person who had influence in the court of the emperor. And so Flaccus asks his friend Lepidus, hey, can you uh, say something to the emperor? Can you, can you paracletos for me? Can you be my advocate? And so his friend goes before the emperor and pleads his cause. And in the end, he didn't get him out of exile, but he did get him moved to another island called Andros. And uh, actually, Google Andros. And you'll, today anyway, I just saw some modern pictures of it. And Andros, it's like this hopping uh, vacation island. I mean, there are cruise ships all over the place, you know, nice blue lagoons, a uh, little bit of greenery, but, but beaches. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. And, and Selepidus ended up getting his friend exiled from this barren island and had him moved to this island of Andros. And, and so that's what, that's, what, that's what the Paraklitos is. We ourselves are left powerless. Christ has invited us to live this perfect life. He's invited us to a life of holiness. But he knows that we cannot do this by ourselves and on our own. And so he sends us this advocate. In his writing, Gaudete et Exultate, Pope Francis writes on holiness in today's world. And he mentions one of the obstacles to holiness is this idea called Pelagianism. 
and Pope Francis, he says that it's very rampant in today's world, Pelagianism. And Pelagianism is the idea that I can attain holiness by myself. That we, through our freedom and, and our willpower, that we can do this by ourselves. We don't need God's grace. We don't need help. And it's, as, it's almost as if God doesn't exist. That, that we can get to heaven all by ourselves, all by our lonesome selves. And this was a heresy, this Pelagian, he lived in the, in the 300s. But Pope Francis is saying how, how present it is in today's world, especially here in the United States, right, where we all want to be that, you know, that individualistic guy, that we can do things on our own, that you know, it's all about me, and you know, burning the midnight oil, and, and just you know, making things happen. And sometimes that can even creep into our spiritual life. That by ourselves, by myself, I can get to heaven. It's a trust in our own powers that by myself I can be holy. And even Christ himself is just considered, you know, just a good model of life. He shows us, you know, what's possible. And, but, you know, in the end, I myself have to do this. And so this is an idea that, that can creep into our, into our spiritual life. Right? But it's a heresy. And this is not how God himself wants it. Right? God wants to journey, th- journey through life with us. He wants to be a part of our spiritual life. Because he knows that by ourselves, by ourselves, we cannot get to heaven. And so it's for this reason that Christ offers us the advocate. Christ offers us his spirit. He's given us this difficult task of getting to heaven. He knows it's difficult. We experience that difficulty. And that's why Christ wants to be a part of our life. And that's why Christ offers us his very spirit. Let us stand and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has promised not to leave us orphans. Counting on the boundless mercy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That divisions in the world will be healed, violence will cease, and the peace of God's kingdom will bless the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessings, for blessings on police, firefighters, emergency medical technicians, and all of those who protect us at the risk of their own lives, let us pray to the Lord. That God will strengthen and preserve our parish 
in, and the students at NC State in his holy service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering from addictions may come to have liberation and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to keep Christ as Lord in our hearts, ready to suffer for the sake of righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for all of our governors and civic leaders that they would just have the courage to live in your light and just especially defending life from conception till natural death. And as our nation begins to open up again, that they would go forward without fear and trusting in our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that you hear our prayers and attend to our needs. Increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and love. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let all this be of a contrite heart, fully accepting by you, Lord, and your sacrifice and your self this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Luis Raphael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, 
and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord. O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice of spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus Christ, in eternal life, to grace you receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, save me. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray. 
strengthen our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hand swift to welcome, <clears throat> arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray your peace in our hearts lord at the end of the day Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. You may go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first 